Yeah, my cousin coaches football. That's the only family I have in Sacred Heart Cathedral. But now a new family member of the Morning Roast. He's going to make his Morning morning Roast debut. He's calling tonight's action mm. on radio for ESPN. Dodgers, Cardinals. It's Boog. John Shambi here on the Morning Roast on 95.70 Game. John, good morning. You're on with Joe Shasky, the Butcher, and Bonte Hill. Good morning, man. I love it. I'm family. I'm in. You're I'm in. in. Hey, You're man. in. You're the uncle here. You're Uncle John from here on out. Uh, we got a monster sure, matchup yeah. here, and we got a lot of Giants fans calling, saying they want the Dodgers. They want the Dodgers okay. just because we haven't seen it in the postseason. But let's talk about tonight's matchup down at Dodger Stadium. Cardinals come in hot. Dodgers come in winning nine of their last ten. How do you see this matchup playing out tonight? I mean, I think the first place you go is on the mound. And, I mean, Wainwright has been sensational down the stretch. He finished his final 14 starts with a 228 ERA. You know, Scherzer's going to be, you know, one of the probably top three for the Cy Young Award. So I still would say I'd expect. I think there's a better chance for Scherzer to get deeper and be more dominant just because he strikes so many people out. But, you know, one game scenario, the Dodgers are the better team. I mean, look, the Dodgers led the majors in run differential. They had the second best record. Um, but in a one game scenario, who who's to say? I saw the Cardinals a lot down the stretch and it was it was pretty incredible. I mean, yeah, they had a run there at the end, but also the Dodgers had a run at the end. It felt like the Giants and Dodgers were playing playoff baseball for the last two months as well. Um, do you think this Max Muncy injury is something that's going to loom large? Uh, I haven't seen what the timetables are. What, what do you think plays out for them with Max Muncy? I think that the Max Muncy injury uh, obviously hurts because he, he delivers – you know, two crucial components to their offense, and that is on-base percentage with slug. And those two things, yeah. you know, correlate the most with, with run scoring. In a single-game scenario, you know, you can usually sustain something like that. And truth be told, you know, if you're talking 15, 18 games, there's a chance you can deal with it as well. But, you know, Max Muncy, Muncy is one of the things that makes them great. So... You know, for tonight, I think that they can be fine because you just, you know, Matt Beatty could have a huge game tonight. And <laughs> with all due respect to Matt Beatty, but you know, in a single game yeah. scenario, we just the postseason is littered with Mark Lemke's and guys that, that step up. But yeah, look, he's he's been one of their best offensive players, so I, it, it stands to reason that they're not as good with Max Muncy out of the lineup. I don't think for tonight it's you know crucial because I just think for tonight it is so flip a coin, you yeah. know? Yeah, when you bring up Mark Lemke, for some reason our brains, we do word association, I go Raphael Belliard. You know what I mean? Like I just inst- <laughs> sure. I instantly pivot to the rest of the infield. So it, what's cra- I want to know, you're, you're a longtime baseball guy. You've, you've obviously got the local view of Chicago, but you also have the national view as well. What do you think the nation wants? Do you think they want Giants-Dodgers? Because I'm watching Red Sox-Yankees last night, and I'm just like, we've never had a real Giants-Dodgers series. And I know I want them to get bounced at some point, the Dodgers, because I'm a diehard Giants fan. But just once, I want the series. Do you think the nation wants that too? I don't know. I I, I don't. I, it's that's funny. I I don't know. I don't. I'm sure they probably don't think about it as much. But I I think that if they get it, they'll realize that it's something that they needed. Because I you know look, I got a chance for ESPN Radio to do. Um, you know, one of those, I guess it was, it was the final weekend series in San Francisco that they played this year, and the atmosphere was sensational. Look, whatever you want to say, you get tired of Yankees and Red Sox, right? But if you watch that game and you were at home and you were someplace, you know, were quiet and you, you watched it so you had the volume up, I mean, you can't tell me that it didn't punch you in the oh. face, the atmosphere at Fenway Park no last night. It was so loud and manic and that's what i mean to me i think oracle park's one of the best atmospheres in baseball and it would mirror exactly that so i don't know whether the nation wants it but it would be bananas um i mean it will be regardless for game one but you know i i just thought last night 
I know people get tired of seeing No, it, that was fun. You, you, the atmosphere was, holy cow. I mean, when Bogart hit the homer, that place came undone. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. John Shambi here on the Morning Rolls on 95.7 The Game. He'll be on a call for ESPN and Radio for Dodgers, Cardinals. Real quick, John, are you going to be at the stadium or will you be in the studio somewhere? No, I'm, I'm in L.A. I'll be at every game on site. Awesome. So awesome. I will have this game, and then I will go uh, to San Francisco with the winner, and then I will have the National League Championship Series. Ooh, wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Be- beautiful, beautiful. So you'll be down there at Dodger Stadium to see a team that won 106 games. And a lot of people are saying, look, hey, man, Giants win 107, Dodgers win 106, but yet they're in a wild card game. Do you want to see baseball do something to change that? Because personally, I think it's just an exception. It's an anomaly. We may not ever see something like this happen again, but do you want to see baseball maybe change it and maybe have these games or these teams reseeded in the postseason? I'm not sure. I, I definitely – It's is it fair? Absolutely not. I don't know whether – so it's not fair. I just I'm trying to figure out whether it, you know is it good or not. Mm. You know to have those teams sort of disappeared in a one game scenario. I lean towards it's probably not good. You probably want the better teams there, um, but this is the nature of the sport. I mean, you guys, but you know, look <clears throat> because of what you do. You talk football. You talk basketball. The distinction between the best team and the worst team. And the NFL and the NBA is way greater than it is in baseball just because of the nature of the sport. If the best team in the NBA played the worst team in the NBA 100 times, they're probably winning 85% of the time. Mm -hmm. In the NFL, it's probably close to 90. In baseball, it's probably closer to 70. Because the sport's just different. So, the, you know, a one-game scenario is just, like, made for TV, but it is you are not – Baseball is not giving you the best team at the end of its playoff format. It is not. That is not what it is designed to do anymore. It is not. If you want to give the trophy to the best team, then the Giants should get the trophy because they won the most games. Right. That's the, that is the way, it, like, the best way yeah. to decide it, in my estimation. Well, and, and the irony is, is their first World Series, 2010, they were not the best team, you know? So it's worked in both directions for the San Francisco Giants. Yeah. Uh, Boog, I've, I've been following your career because I'm a fan of the Levitard show, and I know that you're one yeah. of the people that makes a lot of appearances there. You were the Florida Marlins announcer when, when we hated the Marlins, when you guys took yeah. out the Giants twice. You've been with the Braves. You're now with the Cubs. So you have a good feel on broadcasting throughout the country. How good are the broadcasting crew for the San Francisco Giants. We talk to Dave Fleming every single week. What does it get? John Miller, Crook and Kipe. I mean, they're getting up there in age. We appreciate them. Like, as someone who's in the craft, it, can you just, you know, eloquent, eloquently explain how great these guys are? I can't, you know, I, I have to tell you first things first. So I was at that series, the Dodger Giants series, and getting to see them, was one of the real highlights. Kipe was there, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Look, those four guys are good friends of mine. I love them, so I'm biased. But I also will tell you, they're as good as it gets. They're baseball junkies. They're all funny. They all don't take themselves too seriously. The energy around them is magnificent. When you go there, you just want to go into their booth. I'll tell you a funny thing. So when I did uh, postseason for the World Series during the Giants, the, the three years that they won, I I would do it through the League Championship Series, and then I would do pre and post uh, for Sports Center and for radio. Mm-hmm. So I would do the TV interviews. But during the game, I had no I had no responsibility, and I would just go sit in their booth and hang out with whoever wasn't on. And it we just it was just your face hurt from smiling and laughing and talking. <laughs> and I, I just I adore those guys. I think they're I mean, historically great, uh, as broadcasters. I mean in in and each of them are unique. Um, you know, Mike Wynn, John and Dave and uh oh, we're losing John a little bit there. I think we're losing John a little bit there. See if he. I do want to ask him about 
home field advantage because he's going down there to Dodger Stadium. We saw Fenway Park rocking yesterday mm-hmm. and really rattle the Yankees. You know, he calls Cubs games. We know about Wrigley Field. The Brewers have a nice park in Miller Park. We know about the Braves and the Tomahawk Shop and all that good stuff. How important is home field advantage in these playoffs? Because last year, we didn't get home field advantage. No, he had no. the AL at Sa- in San Diego and Dodger Stadium. Yeah. He had the NL in Arlington. And uh, where else were they playing? In Houston. Yeah. In May Park, I believe. Mm-hmm. And it was just odd. It was just odd to see a neutral World Series in Arlington, Texas. Well, I mean... He brought it up. Oracle is AT&T, Pac-Bell, whatever the heck it's been called, SBC. B, it's been a great home field advantage for them in the playoffs. That right. place rocks. The way Candlestick used to rock for the 49ers, I think it's as electric for Giants games. Like, I, I Go back, those opening shots when Fox or ESPN comes or TNT comes flying in over the top and you just got all the rally rags going crazy and the bleachers is going nuts. Like I, I'm so excited for Friday. I'm going to be in the building for both games. I have to be in there. Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, when they were giving out the rally tiles at that first game in the last Giants Dodger series, and I was like, oh, this is big. Yes. This is really big. Yes. The orange towels are out. They had the resilient SF on them. I brought so a big really flag. Cool. Did you brought I, a big flag. You this? Oh, we I got Josh Abbey oh, back real go. quick. John, we lost you for a second there. We'll yeah, get you out in a second that. here. But you brought up the home field advantage, and you're going to be at Dodger Stadium. Just – how cool is it to have these fans back at the yard? Because last year, yeah. it was so odd, right? You I mean, like, thankfully, the playoffs were really good. They were really good at Petco. They were really good at Dodger Stadium. They were really good down in Arlington, Texas. But it was just odd. Now we're going to see home field advantage really play a factor. You brought up Oracle Park, which is going to be rocking Dodger Stadium. You got Fenway Park now in the mix. We'll see what happens yeah. at Tropicana Field. and uh, We'll see what the White Sox do against the Astros. It's got to be cool for you to be calling the game with 53,000 Dodger fans screaming loud and hard trying to get that home field advantage there for the Dodgers. No doubt. You know, locally for me this year, the the most memorable look, the Cubs had a hard year. They, you know, traded off their core players. But before they did that, they had a reopening day when they got to full capacity. And that was, the, it was a Friday afternoon game against the Cardinals. Bill Murray did the seventh inning stretch. And the Cubs were down 5 nothing to the Cardinals. And they tied the game on a 14 pitch at bat homer from Rizzo. Wow! And that was it. That it was like so. I had to wait till June to really get the full effect of what that place was like. So yeah, you try not to take for granted the great atmospheres. And Dodger Stadium will be will be jumping tonight, or at least I think it should be. Oh, it, it, it will be. It was jumping over the last two, three weeks when they were at home. It was absolutely crazy. Boog, I, I know you were with the Cubs this year. You, you referenced it a couple times already. Giants acquired Chris Bryant, and we talk so much about Posey and Crawford and that playoff medal that they have, that championship medal. The guy we often overlook is Chris Bryant. Explain to the San Francisco audience here what Chris Bryant did for the Cubs in the playoffs, because I, I can't really put my finger on it. Um, why I feel like we're over we're sleeping on it. Well, look, I think that, um, you know, you're talking about when he's right, a guy that will, you know, take walks, get on base and slug. And then I think that the bigger thing now that helps is he delivers all of that with positional versatility with a guy that if you need him to play left, right, or even center or third, and you can put him at first. So, you know, depending on, like, part of what I would say is this. It, it indirectly, Brandon Belt being out, you are in a better position uh, to get a favorable matchup because Chris Bryant can play multiple positions, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. So Belt, be, so he may not play first base. He's not going to play first base, more than likely. But because Chris Bryant has versatility, because that bat plays in multiple spots, it allows Gabe Kapler to do stuff um, with belt out. So I, I think that that's the, the crucial thing. It's it's the, the on-base and the slug with the positional versatility, I think, is a big part of it. What's going to be the bigger loss in the postseason? I know we asked you about Muncy earlier, but is it going to be Max Muncy mm. for the Dodgers or Brandon Belt for the Giants? Um, I, I mean, kind of push is what yeah. I would say. I, I think – I mean, I, look – Belt, since I've always been a big Brandon Belt fan, I, I I would personally say, if I were to wag my finger, I would say I, I think that 
Giants fans, he's been underappreciated, to be perfectly he honest. He has been. It's fair. That's a fair too. assessment. We, we've appre- we, we have. That's we a have. fair assessment. Yep. Um, I, I would say because he's a guy who would take his walk. And I, he plays in a ballpark that is suppressed left-handed power. If your name's not Barry Bonds, um, I, I would say the last you know since the start of last year, he's been an absolute monster. So I, I would say that they're both giant losses, but they both because these teams have so much versatility and so much depth. It, I would say if if it was most other teams. Talking about the loss of players the caliber of Belt and Muncie, it would be gigantic. I think that both the Giants and the Dodgers have enough depth to sustain it, not just for the Dodgers tonight or the division series for both teams. Or it's like I think they both can still win the title if neither guy plays the entire playoffs. No doubt about that. You have a great call tonight. Dodgers and Cardinals will be watching closely. A lot of Giants f- fans up here. We want Dodgers. We want to see yeah, the Dodgers, do. but we also don't want to see Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldsmith, no. who have had the Giants' no, numbers no. over the years. That will be a nightmare, plus Tyler O'Neill, who's had a very solid season with the St. Louis Cardinals as well. Have a good call, John. All right. Thanks, you guys.